welcome viewers today the topic of our discussion will be the widening of the scope of humanities research in the last video we have uh, uh, tried to uh, sort of demonstrate that uh, though most of the general principles techniques methods and tools of research methodology uh, are relevant primarily to quantitative research but they have a wide applicability to all sorts of different problems of uh, humanities research also in that sense uh, qualitative humanities research owes its date to the different principles of research methodology there is no denying the fact today we are going to discuss three different academic theories that are supposed to deliver quite a few potential elements for the humanities research the qualitative research and the quantitative approaches to research are different in terms of their essence we all know that uh, the parametric and non parametric uh, testing of hypothesis the different uh, measurement scales uh, the analysis of variance and covariance are all these primarily applicable to quantitative research but as i have already stated the real strength of the humanities research is its multifarious academic theories which are supposed to be undertaken by the research scholars doing their research in humanities or humanistic social sciences even in medical science there are a trial based clinical trials and epidemiological trials uh, being carried out in their research so qualitative research has spread actually all over the subjects across all disciplines covering the whole range of humanities humanities humanistic social science arts literature and even medical science and to some extent some uh, uh, a pure social sciences also like sociology and uh, cultural anthropology so what i'd like to trace is the theories that the humanities will be uh, will be ready to approve as potential elements towards its various features i'll primarily focus on three theories one is the grounded theory the second one is phenomenology and the third one is deconstruction theory and these theories uh, though uh, the, the list is in no way exhaustive i'll, I'll be uploading uh, several other videos in the um, during um, uh, my next course of lectures uh when i uh, i'll be explaining some of the more important theories of humanities but now we have chosen only three because these three are related to one another the grounded theory the phenomenology and the deconstruction theory all the theories are actually a, a fresh revisit to the core of the problems of humanities the grounded theory is the central uh, the central principle of grounded theory is the collection and accumulation of the data first data come first and then the theory the central principle of the grounded theory is accumulation of data and then on those data a theory is built upon so uh, in that sense it is different from the other theories and that is why when the grounded theory was initiated uh, it was severely challenged by some of the sociologists who were actually in favor of the theories going first and then the data coming second the theory was a challenge by the sociologists 
for the purpose that they actually wanted uh, the theories to be used as tools. For example, Marxism, feminism, modernism, all these theories can be used by, by the researchers as tools. So when according to those sociologists who challenged grounded theory, the researchers should have acquired the data second and only following the theories they would have collected the data. And in that sense, grounded theory is completely uh, opposite to those uh, views. Grounded means the theory is grounded in the data themselves. First data and then the theory. And what is the benefit of it? The benefit is the researcher has always to be objective rather than being subjective. So suppose, suppose uh, a researcher is studying the the position of a woman in ancient India. In that sense, there could have been several several attitudes or several approaches to the study of it. Feminist study, feminist uh, approach, Marxist approach, modernist approach, structuralist approach. But in uh, qualitative humanities research, when the researcher is applying grounded theory, he, he is required to uh, collect the data at random and then let the data do the talking for them and uh, speaks for themselves and uh, as a result the researcher will be able to reconstruct a theory which is perhaps a way different from all other theories propagated by the other scholars. So in that sense grounded theory is a spectacular theory which uh, opens up a new door for research in qualitative humanities research. And another interesting thing is that uh, a, a computer software has been developed by the computer scientist so as to analyze the data, so as to uh, codify the data and at the last analyze the data. So it has become a very good advantage for the qualitative humanities researchers that a computer software has been developed to help them. And the name of the software is MaxQDA. M-A-X-Q-D-A, it is the name of the computer software that enables a researcher to automatically organize the data, codify the data and analyze the data. So grounded theory is one of the most outstanding theories that has been born uh, in recent times. The next theory I am coming uh, to talk about is phenomenology. Phenomenology uh, is, uh, is uh, somewhat related to a grounded theory grounded theory it is actually a philosophy of conscious experiences or a philosophical study of the structures of uh, lived or uh, what should i say uh, intangible experiences such as perception thought memory uh, imagination etc and etc so it is it's being it is being sprouted from the first person viewpoints it is most important aspect of phenomenology that all the all the uh, approaches to it are coming out from the first person viewpoints. There are basically two types of uh, phenomenology if it uh, if it is broadly divided uh, divided into two categories. First first category is hermeneutic category. A hermeneutic inquiry. Uh, stresses the importance of interpretation or that means it focuses on interpretation that is to say how historically uh, uh, conditioned individuals or even a group of individuals having like-minded approach for example the women folk for instance uh, the upper classes of the society etc and etc and those uh, uh, groups of individuals or even a single individual can interpret his or their own world within a given context. And that is called hermeneutic phenomen phenomenological inquiry. Existential phenomenology focuses on, uh, on various uh, lived experiences like movements, social movements, actions. Uh, wars and conflicts, oppression, uh, various uh, psychological aspects of the people, 
like desire, uh, hunger, uh, etc. And uh, uh, and apart from that, finitude also. So, the uh, uh, the researcher, uh, when he is applying existential phenological uh, method, has to go deep into the psychology of the society to unravel some mysteries of the thought process and their uh, impact on the later society, the later impact on the society. So this is called phenomenology. This is another very good discovery the scientists, particularly the social scientists, have brought about. Then the deconstruction theory. It was uh, the deconstruction theory was spearheaded by the Algerian-born French philosopher Jacques Derrida, and uh, the theory also developed in the context of phenomenology, and ran to counter the Saussurean. Uh, structuralism. So deconstruction theory is basically or essentially post-structuralist method which uh, runs to, uh, runs to uh, contradict the Saussurean structuralism. Uh, Derrida arguably adopted a very uh, quasi-leftist or neo-leftist or protestant approach towards uh, research. That is why uh, so many people, so many researchers have uh, identified him uh, Derrida uh, to be a Marxist but actually he is not so he is not entirely Marxist though he stepped back to Marxism at one point of time but later on he uh, categorically uh, identified himself to be not belonging to any pot political party at all but his approach to research is decisively leftist or, or arguably quasi leftist or I would rather say uh, neo leftist I would put it that way. So uh, there are several methods of deconstruction. Deconstruction is a challenging uh, approach to research. So whenever one adopts deconstruction theory as a tool or method of his research, he is actually going through several processes, several steps and I would mention at least four of them, the four most important steps in the process of deconstructing a text. Uh, a step one, step one, as I have already stated that it is a, it is decisively, uh, it is decisively, you know, a challenging, challenging. So uh, the researcher is actually challenging every aspect of the society, uh, the knowledge of the society. The first of all, the researcher has to decline to accept the uh, prevailing wisdom and knowledge and uh, and also the belief system this is the first step he has to challenge the social system secondly he has to analyze uh, the sentence structure because he has to find out the relation he has to figure out the relationship between uh, the text and its presumed meaning so uh, the researcher would, would have to shout like i don't like the meaning i don't like the meaning and that is the reason why it is called challenging approach to research. So he has to analyze the sentence structure in such a way that the meaning of the words appear to him differently at different point of time. The third point is he has to play with the possible meanings of the words because a word can have different meanings to different persons at different levels of his identity and in that uh, sense Derrida was reasonably influenced by Bhartri Hori who was an 8th century ancient Indian philosopher the author of Bhakko Podio. Derrida was greatly influenced by Bhartri Hori and the last step but the most important perhaps of all is uh, the researcher has to uh, expose the cultural biases of the society and that is the reason why the deconstruction theory has been launched by Derrida. So by uh, following these uh, four steps, uh, the researcher will be able to find out several other meanings which probably, which probably the author of the text would have been delighted to find that their, uh, their writing would have had uh, uh, such different meanings other than or rather from what they actually meant. 
So the humanities research is uh, not a singular research, um, I mean the one dimensional sort of a research, it is a multi-dimensional heterogeneous type of research. So if the researcher uh, can coordinate or exploit all these theories, for example grounded theory, uh, the phenomenological theory and the deconstruction theory, then I am sure he will be able to bear some fruit and uh, his research will be of a very very high standard indeed. So uh, this is all I have for you now and hopefully I will be uploading a few more videos in near future explaining some of the theories uh, and this, giving details of some of the uh, theories. So uh, thank you very much for watching the video and till I upload the next video stay safe. Namaskar.